A hard time in my life was when my grandma passed away. A couple years ago, I lost a parent, and uh, it was a very difficult time, especially at such a young age. My uncle died, passed away. On my mom's side, and uh, it was a really difficult time. One of my friend's dads died, but her, her stepdad, and I had to help her through it. My dad's best friend, he's like a really close family friend, we called him my uncle, and he passed away, and he had just gotten married. So his wife, we like had to take care of her. She lived at her house for about like a month. I feel like a difficult time was when I was a junior, and I was getting bad grades. I was almost cut off the football team because of my grades. And but I am better now, and I have learned from it. When I moved out of my mom's house and moved in with my dad, it was uh. It was hard because like, I had to work and like pay for my side of the rent. My junior year in high school, my parents had like issues and everything, but they worked it out. But for me, it was a hard time. My grandfather passed away a few years ago. It was hard because I was pretty close with him. My junior year, I got in a car accident, and I couldn't really play football that much. I had a friend recently whose parents went through a divorce, and I really had to help them through that because they had a real tough time with that. How did you deal with this emotional pain? Did you deal with it in a negative or a positive way? To be honest, both. I've, in a positive way, I've taken out my frustrations through sports like wrestling and lifting. In a negative way, drug and alcohol use. Negative. Uh, I drank a lot, <laughs> like a lot, and um, yeah, basically I was never sober, so I kind of dealt with it with like that. Mostly, I just kept myself dealing with pain. Forget about it. Try to ignore it. I think I dealt with it in a positive way because it was like a time for me and my aunt to get closer and like my whole family to have a bonding experience. At first it was negative, you know, I got down a little bit. I didn't like it. I was sad. I was upset. But then after a while, I coped myself together. I was like, you know, Trevor, you got, you got to be better than that. Positive way was that like that actually pushed me on to grow my beliefs in church and I started going more and they actually pushed me to like help other people more. Life is an emotional roller coaster at times, with ups, downs, twists, turns, joy, and sorrow. These emotions are part of us. Sometimes we show them to others. Like the time my sister, she takes my clothes that are new. I just get them from the store and she wears them all the time. And uh, sometimes we keep them bottled inside, like the time I liked the girl, and of course I didn't tell her, so she went off and dated another guy. But I kept it inside even though I was really hurt by it. Oh. The pain from various situations and emotions can often be difficult to deal with than physical pain. Many people would rather have a broken leg than a broken heart. How true. So how do we get through the painful times and get to a place of hope? That's what we'll be talking about today. Letting go of the pain within and finding hope. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. And I'm Tess. And this, and this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. The pain that many of the teens on the street experienced had something to do with the death of a loved one. However, there are many different ways that we can experience pain. Our spotlight guest, Dana Pizzagoni, counsels girls at the Catholic High School of Baltimore. She shares with us some ways to analyze and approach pain so that we can begin to deal with it. Let's meet Dana now. Gosh, I deal with pain and suffering in a number of ways. I think the first thing I do that's really important is to just sit with it and notice it, see where it's coming from. It could just be a bad day and then it'll dissipate on its own, or it can mean that something serious is going on in my heart that I need to pay attention to. I think a positive way to handle emotional pain is to feel it as scary or as difficult as it can be, and then to talk about it with someone. People hold on to their pain because people often fear that no one's gonna understand what they're going through, or perhaps they feel really alone, like no one else has ever gone through the kind of pain that they're experiencing. And if you don't talk about whatever's going on with anyone, it can be really isolating and, and kind of intensify. It's as if you're um, blowing into a balloon, you know, and something might happen, it'll start out really small, and then it just gets bigger and bigger until it explodes. But if you talk with someone about your emotional pain, whether it's a trusted friend or a teacher or a counselor, then you can work through it, and it kind of loses its power once you let it go. Some people use really destructive ways to let go of their pain when they don't have someone that they feel like they can talk to. Sometimes emotional pain can build up, and it just looks like anger. You know, if someone's angry and irritated all the time, and they tend to isolate themselves. Other times, people will turn to drugs or alcohol, something external to, to try to escape whatever they're experiencing. There's also young people who will harm themselves, you know, will cut themselves to try to let go of emotional pain. And 
that can be very scary for that person. If the way that you're letting go of your emotional pain isn't healthy, it's just gonna add on to the pain. Um, and sometimes it adds shame and guilt as well. Um, I remember when my grandmother died of Alzheimer's and that was a really painful experience for me because I feel like I never got to know her. Like, the last memory of her I have is her in bed. So I, it's just painful for me to think that before this, um, she was like a really strong, outgoing woman and then I, I really never got to meet her. I couldn't imagine going through that. Let's meet our studio guests and find out how they've experienced pain in their life. Okay, they are Gabrielle, Gracie, Vanessa, Brendan, Brianna, Drew, and John. So what about you? Can you describe in a time in your life when you were going through a difficult time emotionally? Well, yeah, I can. When I was younger, I was bullied a lot just because of my skin color, because of the way I acted, because of my had buck teeth. And it was really hard because I felt alone. I was bullied throughout my freshman year and also when I was little in my dance school. Like, they would be like, oh, if you weren't here, then this person would be. Because I didn't have all the things that they did, they would talk bad about me, I guess. It was hard. My family went through a hard time with my older sister, actually. Um, when she was 16, she ran away from home. For years at a time, we wouldn't hear from her. It was tough for me because, like, as my older sister, I always looked up to her for, you know, advice. And recently, she's come back and, you know, tried to get in touch with us again. So, I don't know, it's tough. My mom and my grandma always talk about my grandpa and um, he passed away before I was born but it always brings me pain to see them in pain because I know that they miss him and I try to help them to try to cope with the pain. One day my mom came home and she was just at the hospital and me and all my siblings were watching TV and she came in and told us that their dad passed away. He wasn't my dad and I didn't really know him that well but they did and it was really like traumatizing for them. I thought I should be there for them and help them through whatever struggle they are in. Last year, my grandfather passed away and it was really hard because me and him were so close and we did everything together. And he'd always share me share stories and I miss those stories now because now that he's gone, it's just really hard. Just listening to all of your stories, we see that there are many different types of pain. So how can we recognize the good pain from the bad pain? How do we know when we need to work through it and when we need to let it go? Next, Dana shares a personal experience and gives us some advice on identifying and dealing with pain. Let's take a look. One time in my life when I was experiencing some pain and didn't deal with it in a healthy way, when I was in a relationship that wasn't going well, the way that I dealt with the pain was to just try to fix it, to work harder, to do more. And that's not letting go of pain. Unhealthy pieces in his life started to really weigh on my own life. And I realized that I couldn't fix it, that it was his life. And loving him meant giving him space to deal with whatever he needed to deal with. I had to understand the difference between pain that you need to work on and work through and pain that is just a sign that something's not working and you need to let it go. Someone that's really dear to my heart that has turned to cutting herself to try to let go of that pain that she's feeling on the inside. For many people, it can work in almost an addictive cycle. And then they feel all of this guilt and shame about having harmed themselves. And when something like that comes up, if it's a friend or within yourself, it's really important to seek help, to go to a professional counselor and learn other ways to cope because we never need to cut ourselves. We never need to hurt ourselves. There are so many other ways of getting it out that can actually help heal. I think the most important thing to do when we're trying to let go of pain is to know we're not alone. Pain has a way of kind of overwhelming us. And sometimes it can be the only thing we see. And sharing it with someone and knowing that we're not alone is probably the single most important thing for me. And that can be recognizing in your tears that God is with you. And that can be recognizing in a conversation with a friend or a counselor that you're not alone and that other people have gone through this. There's hope because you can move through pain. There's always something more than pain. 
So about a month ago, my dad gets a phone call from his doctor and he tells him that he has breast cancer. It really took a toll on me. I stopped doing like extracurricular things like soccer and singing and it really just put me in a really terrible mood every day. And, but I didn't want to let him know that I was feeling bad because I know then it would make him feel worse about his predicament. When I was being bullied, I used to seclude myself. I always used to sit in class alone and just like come home, just count myself out from a lot of things. Whenever I feel like there's something weighing on me, I'll just talk to God and I'll let him know that I'm sorry for what I've done or I want you to help this person with this because I know that they're having pain or trouble or help me get over this or anything like that because I know I could trust him with anything. Think about how Jesus experienced various emotions and pain within. He was pretty angry with the money changers in the temple and deeply troubled in the agony of the garden. And he experienced betrayal of a friend through Judas. We can respond to pain and negative emotions in one of two ways. One, I can close myself off with others and God and try to deal with my feelings all alone. Or two, I can open myself up to God and others and look for meaning in the pain. And offer this pain up to Christ and let it go and embrace hope. So how do we deal with pain? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. Get their mind off of it by doing another activity. Just use the pain to get closer to the people that you love and that are still there with you and to move on from it together. Being there for other people. Other people that have lost parents or have been through traumatic experiences. Like I embraced it to become like better in life and like some like take after her in some ways. Pray to God and uh, hopefully help me move on. Turn it around positive. Look at the bright side of everything. Bad things happen all the time, you know. You gotta always have faith in God. It's basically like Spider-Man. Spider-Man got bit by a spider and he got superpowers, but what did he do with his deformity? He used it to help other people. In a way, you can honestly relate that, even though it sounds weird. In a way, he's right. Spider-Man turned a painful circumstance into an opportunity to help others. He made the situation hopeful. And hope is not a magic potion that changes your emotions immediately, but is one of the theological virtues that you receive at baptism. Hope is connected to God's desire for us to be happy, not in a shallow way, I have everything I want sense. But in the sense that we are created for more than this earth. We are created for heaven. Next, Dana shares ways of finding hope and finding help from friends, family, and prayer. And she reminds us that we are not alone. Viktor Frankl, he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning in a concentration camp. And he talked about meaning and how no matter what's going on around you or what's kind of coming at you from other people, you can always hold on to your own sense of meaning in your life. You control your attitude, you control your spirit. And when I think about Viktor Frankl and someone like him who was in a concentration camp, if he can grasp hope, if he can speak to love of his wife that he knows is gone, that was just, you know, in a gas chamber, then we can all come to know hope. We can all choose how we respond to pain, whether it's an absolute surrender to God, whether it's in tears or anger towards God, whether it's in conversation with a friend, we don't have to be alone. My advice for someone, start to think of one person that they can confide in, and maybe it's God. You know, we believe in a God that loves us unconditionally. We believe in a God that will forgive us no matter what, and a God that, you know, has heard it all and has been with people and is always with us. So I really encourage people to pray about what they're going through and to allow God to guide them to someone that can really help them. Praying is an amazing tool to use. Meditation is an amazing tool to use when you're going through emotional pain. And a lot of times you also need more than that, you know? God needs to have some skin sometimes. And so finding a friend that you see God in, that you felt loved by, can be a great person to talk to. Finding a counselor that is a good fit for you is also a really important option. You kind of have that feeling like, okay, this is, this is a little too much for my friends and I to just talk about. Honor that wisdom, know that the truth's inside of you, and find someone you're comfortable with. And know that you're worth it, that you deserve healing, that there is hope for you. I was down about being bullied. My cousin, she took me in for a weekend and just like talked to me and like made me 
feel like someone cared that was important. This one time I was trying to like bottle everything in and just act like nothing was wrong and then eventually when I was in my um, course director's office I just exploded and she calmed me down and helped me through everything and it's just nice to know that someone's there to help. In seventh grade I was in depression and it got worse and worse and some of my friends they noticed and I started talking to them and I told them everything that had happened and they really helped me and they are really given me hope that, you know, I do have a place and I do have friends and I have someone that I can talk to. This guy, he grew up in um, a torn household. Uh, his father had left the family and his mother uh, was an alcoholic and she constantly used their money to buy uh, alcohol and drugs. He took that pain that he had and that energy into football and um, he got like really good at it and um, he went to like semi uh, pro leagues and everything so um, there's a way to turn around pain I think into something good too. So although suffering and pain is part of the human experience, we have faith that God will restore and strengthen us during these times. Next, Dana shares how we can look to Jesus as a model of how working through the pain restores and renews us. When I think about Jesus' example of experiencing pain, the story that always comes to mind is Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. When I think of Jesus weeping alone, all of his friends have fallen asleep, and at the end of it, he said, All right, God, <laughs> whatever your will is, Father, let it be done. That is a beautiful moment for me. There's a surrender in it that's really important. So sometimes when we're experiencing pain, the surrender, Lord, let your will be done, could be, like for me, getting out of a relationship. Sometimes it's continuing to experience pain. You know, I have friends that have struggled with addiction. When you step into recovery, it's painful. You physically withdraw depending on what you've used to kind of escape. That kind of pain hurts and it's healthy. When I volunteered with Maggie's Place, I served women who were pregnant and homeless out in Arizona. So I had the privilege of being with some of them while they were giving birth, and it hurts, as you might be aware of. But in that pain, they brought a whole new life into the world. God introduced a whole new reflection of himself into the world. And so through the pain, there was new life. And I think that that's important to remember that with every death, there's a rising. Whether it's a letting go, or a pushing through, a sacrifice, or a surrender, there's always hope. Because we're always more than just our pain. It's just one part of our humanity. For me, dealing with pain, um, I simply just talk to God. Like right before bed, in the dark and quiet, just lie down and place all my troubles before Him. Just speak with Him, and sometimes just not even speaking, listening to Him. and. Somehow he always finds a way to shine a new light on the situation and it really comforts me right before bed. When my grandfather passed away a few years ago, um, my family got very close because he was what held my family together. And I would talk to my family members about it and I would talk to my, one of my closest friends at the time. And it, it really helped me cope with everything because it seemed like everyone just knew what to say. A while ago, my friend, he was going through a lot of pain and he wasn't going to school and he was kind of depressed and just like going day by day. And so I went over one day, I talked to him and tried to like shed some light on him and know that he's like not alone. And I kind of helped him through it. So whenever I have so much pain, I will go to God and I'll say whatever I feel. If I feel like, you know, this friend, you know, hurt me so much, I can tell him that. I have a journal that I write down all my feelings in. Like sometimes I don't even write, I just scribble on the sides of the page just to get my emotions out. It can help us to recover our joy and our hope when others simply listen and accept us as we share our pain and sadness. When you share your sadness with me, I can offer you joy, even if it's simply by being there for you to hold your hand or give you a hug. Let's see if the teens on the street think God is there to help. To be honest, I'm uneducated when it comes to religion. I can say that I helped myself get through it, and my relatives and my friends helped me get through it. Like, I prayed, but I don't know if someone really was out there to help me. Well, I mean, I guess in a way, God's always there, but... So, I mean, I guess he helped through it. God did help me 
you know, I prayed for her and stuff. It was, I mean, it was really painful, but... Knowing that my uncle was in a better place helped us all get over it and know that he was moving on to somewhere better than here and that, like, one day we would be with him again. I have a personal relationship with my, my Lord, Jesus Christ, personal relationship. Um, I look to him. I can't talk to my parents sometimes about situations if that has to deal with them. I forgot to help a lot. I'm not religious, but I have strong faith. And I think, yeah, one's relationship with God really does help someone move on with their life. If you have faith in God, then I feel like he will guide you in the right direction. Prayer is a good form because it helped me and it can help you. With prayer, you can have a conversation with someone. Like, you don't hear anything back, but you can just talk and pull your feelings out if you're not comfortable with sharing with anyone else. It's just like a daily routine. Like, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you wake up, you pray, you go to bed, you pray. So it's like, Honestly, I thought, like, that was just one part of my life that I would never get back. But praying, like, it just helped me get past it. We all have these days, moments, or even weeks when life is challenging. When our emotions seem to be dragging us down and when the best option seems to be skipping a day of school and staying in bed. Dana shares what our Catholic faith has to offer when we are down in the dumps, when we think we've hit our darkest moment. When I think of my darkest moment, what I'm reminded of is that we're never alone. I can remember crying so hard I didn't know if I was going to be able to breathe. And I remember thinking, God, where are you? And it's not a new idea. It's not a new experience. King David wrote in the Psalms all about emotional pain. He wrote, why are you cast down my soul? Why do you groan within me? And the next line is, hope in God, I will praise him still, my savior and my God. But you have to go through that. Where are you, God? Really, God? What is all this pain about? Like, why are you hurting self? Why are you hurting soul? You have to move through that pain to then get to this hope in God. I will praise him still. When I was in my darkest moment, <laughs> just kind of on the floor weeping, what came to me was that I wasn't alone. And that's the one piece of advice I would give to anyone experiencing pain. Know that God was with you. It's such an important message that it's what God named his son. Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes that's all we need to know when we're in pain. We're not alone. Our faith reminds us that pain doesn't destroy us, that even death doesn't destroy us, that Christ rose from the dead. In Christ's passion, he fell down three times. So this was Jesus, the Lord, and he fell down three times. I was probably going to fall down a lot more than that, and that it was okay. And that just like Jesus had Simon to help him carry his cross, I could reach out for help, that it was normal and human and full of grace to ask for help. My friends and I are probably the weirdest, most um, outcast group clique in our school. And you know what? Some people will say, I don't like your glasses. I don't like your shoes. You know, why are you guys so weird? I will look at them in the eye and be like, you know what? I'm glad I'm weird. You know what? You may think these sandals are ugly. I like them. Guess what? You may not like her personality. I love her personality. That's why she's my friend. That is probably the thing that gets me, my friends, gets them through it. It's just like, you are who you are. Why try to be anything else? I have a good quote to go along with that, which is, to thine own self be true. Like, don't sell yourself short. Like, you are what you are. And after like all I've been through, I know like my friends now, they come to me for advice with everything. So I know that's a good way to cope with it. I talk to people who are really close to me because it, it helps me get everything off of my chest and usually they'll give me words of encouragement or you know advice that can help me get through it. I'm really close with my family. So whenever I have a problem or anything, I usually go to them and they'll guide me in the right way and always know like the right thing to say. Whether it be like exercise or sports or something, um, I always try to stay active when I'm feeling upset or depressed or anything because it helps me to like move on and realize that you know there's more out there than just um, the sadness that I'm feeling at the moment. Even in the darkest moments there's always going to be the light. The sun's always going to rise and you know Jesus is a light to us and he calls us to be a light to others. We can turn our pain into something to help others and spread the good news. There are a number of tips for dealing with the ups and downs of life. So ask yourself a couple of questions. Am I honest with myself about what I'm feeling? 
Do I think about why I might be feeling this way? Have I opened myself up to God through prayer to tell Him what's going on? Did I reflect on the true meaning of hope, that I'm created for heaven and that this is a passing moment? Remember we are connected to hope, even when things are looking dark. When we unite our pain with Jesus on the cross, we find meaning in the suffering. When we share our pain with others, we are open to receiving support, joy, and comfort. Most importantly, if the pain is too much to handle, with the help from our friends and family. Seek professional help through a counselor at school or your church or a private therapist. So can you share any stories of how you found hope after letting go of the pain? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com or share your thoughts with us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with this from Romans chapter eight. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. So rest in the hope that no pain or suffering we experience on earth can compare to the glory that will be revealed to us in heaven. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.